Hey all! In this video we will see how to make translucent materials. First, let me explain what a translucent material is. In general, let's say that we have three categories of materials. The opaque ones, where you are not able to see through them. The transparent ones, which allow light to pass through them and objects behind them can be distinctly seen. And finally, we have the translucent materials, which are, let's say, a combination of the first two. They allow some light to travel through them. Some examples of translucent materials are a frosted glass, sunglasses or liquids like orange juice and coffee. Translucency is also known as subsurface scattering or SSS. Let's now see how to create a translucent material in V-Ray. I have this gorilla sculpture and the sun is set behind it. Let me also isolate it so that you can see that this sculpture has some thin parts and up here it's pretty thick. Let's open the material editor, create every material and assign it to the gorilla. I will start the interactive rendering. So the default V-Ray material is opaque, which, as we said earlier, means that it doesn't allow the light to pass through it and as you can see here, it creates a strong shadow. If I change the reflection color, my material gets reflected, but nothing changes in terms of the light entering through it. Let me also blur out the reflections. It's the refraction that affects the transparency of an object. And the lower we go, the more transparent the material gets. If a refract is set to white, we basically have a clear glass. Please notice here that now that we have a transparent material, we no longer have shadows, since the light travels through the object. To make this a frosted glass, we need to adjust the glossiness. At one we have clear glass, the lower we go, the blurrier it becomes. Now, let's say that I want the gorilla to be brown frosted glass. One way to set it is to change the refraction color to brown. I will also set the diffuse color to black or dark gray. Depending on the brown color we will choose, if it's dark brown, we get a brown frosted sculpture if it's light brown, we just get a frosted glass with a subtle brown tint, mostly seen over the edges of the sculpture. Another way to set the color, which I prefer the most, is through the fog color in the translucency section. I will uh, swap the two colors. What we see here is that although we use the same brown color, when we set it to the fog parameter, the effect is much stronger. If I set the fog color to a light brown, we still get an intense brown glass mainly on the sculpture's thickest parts and on the edges. So, why do I prefer the fog color over the refraction color? Because in the fog, we have the depth option that controls the strength of the fog effect. Higher values reduce the effect of the fog, making the material more transparent. I will take this back to 1 and save it in history. Thank you. 
Let's now change the translucency type to volumetric. If I set the subsurface scattering amount to zero, we get the same result as when we had the translucency set to none. I will also save this in history to compare them. What is the scatter color? It's the color revealed as you shine the light through an object. Let me make the scatter color, let's say green. And uh, set the depth to one centimeter and the amount to one. So what happens here? Our sculpture is a frosted brown color with green color shining over the edges. The more we increase the depth, the more the green spreads and the lighter it becomes. Let me take the fog color back to a dark brown to also see how it changes. We use the volumetric option usually with liquids like orange juice or milk or other highly reflective surfaces. Another option for the translucency is SSS, which stands for subsurface scattering. This is usually used for human skin or other relatively opaque materials. You can see that now the green color is not really visible. To adjust this, we need to set the refraction color to gray instead of white. I will set a value of 175. Let's compare the two methods. So, depending on the result we are after, we choose the respective method. As I said earlier, we usually choose the volumetric method for liquids like orange juice or coffee and in general for highly reflective surfaces and the SSS method for human skin or candles, so in general more opaque surfaces. What is new in VRA6 regarding the translucency is the illumination type. Before, we only had the directional option, but now uniform is also added. As its name implies, in the uniform method, the light spreads more uniformly inside the material. The result looks pretty similar, but the uniform method renders faster. What's also new in VRA6 is that apart from setting the scatter and amount color, we can also add a map. This will help us give more variation to the final result. Let me add a noise map. I will set it to turbulence and connect it to translucent. That's all on the translucent materials. Thanks for watching. I will see you all in my next video.